Hi, I'm Chris Cooper. Welcome to the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us. There's nothing like the taste of homegrown strawberries, fresh from the garden. But how about saving some for later? Today, we're going to show you how easy it is to freeze fresh strawberries so you can enjoy them throughout the year. We're also going to talk about growing strawberries and blackberries. All of that and more is coming up next on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, so stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Mrs. Juanita Jones of Jones Orchard. And Mr. D is here. Thank hey. you for joining me today. Good to be here. Good to have you, Miss Juanita. Thank you. All right, we nice have strawberries here. on the table. I love strawberries. What is it that you're going to tell us about strawberries today? Well, the first thing I would like to say is the best way to eat strawberries is straight from the field. Uh -huh. Now, Chris says garden, and I say field because we have more than a garden spot, we have a field. Okay. Be that as it may, that is the best strawberry is right from the field. Okay. But there are also other ways that you can use them. Um, I've jotted a few things down here. I'm sure you've thought of many more, but ice cream topping, shortcake, mm -hmm. muffins, jams, smoothies. Well, everybody is into smoothies yes, these days, they so they make wonderful smoothies. Cobblers and pies. And don't forget, you can mix strawberries with most any other fruit. Uh, the strawberries are divine mixed with uh, peaches, <laughs> uh, blueberries, blackberries, uh, bananas, all of those. So uh, use your imagination and be creative and go with the, with the strawberries. But after the, after the field and after we're done eating as much as we can, then we <laughs> would like to save some for a later date. All right. Now, what I would like to do is to just go through very briefly uh, some simple procedures to use uh, for freezing and preserving them for another time. Uh, when you get them home from the, uh, from the field uh, and you want to store them in the refrigerator for a little while, do not wash them. Uh, oh, so we're not going to wash them. Okay. We're not going to wash right. them right at first. Not at first. Because okay. the, the, the water seems to make them deteriorate a little bit fast. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So they have a very short uh, shelf life and a refrigerated life as well. So you need to, need to use them up and get them in the freezer as soon as you can after you get home from the field. Okay. And after the second day in the refrigerator, they... They tend to dry a little bit, maybe, and not look quite as fresh. They're certainly still usable and still delicious, but they kind of lose their luster just a little bit. Okay. Okay. And when you get ready to do your freezing, um, I'd like to show you a little bit about the, um, the capping process, what we call the capping process. Okay, yeah. Well, let's show us the capping process. The capping Ms. process. A lot of people will take this berry and they'll come down to here mm. and they'll cut it off there. So okay. you've wasted a Rest lot of your hard-earned yes, you berry. So these have, I, went, I strayed from my procedure and I did wash <laughs> these <laughs> uh, because I'm going to slice them up for you. But if you'll come right underneath this cap here and there is a little core that you mm -hmm. need to, to get, and that, that little bit right there is not okay. going to hurt yes, anything. So you, you just uh, take, the, take that off and uh, stick them in. And I forgot my pusher this morning, so we'll, we'll go along with that to go down. Okay. So this is, this is the way. So you, just a little bit off the just, top. Just yeah, we're not going bit. deep into yeah, the Yeah, don't, don't go deep. Just okay. right underneath right there. Yeah, I've, I've seen some people just use a spoon for that instead of a knife. On, a well, real, on real ripe strawberries. And then I just put them in the slicer like that. 
Yeah. Now, some people like to mash them up and and uh, maybe do a different procedure, but I have found that this works really well with the different ways that you can use the frozen berries. Okay. Uh, then after we get the uh, after we get the berries um, sliced okay. in here, I have some already already done. So the real small ones, I see you don't cut up, just the real big ones. No, the they'll 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 slice up. Okay. Don't get your finger yeah, Watch your here. finger now. Well, that's way down there. <laughs> yeah, watch your finger. <laughs> that, that's the slicer on that. And and uh, so anyway, we'll slice those up. And There's quite a few in there. Yeah. I, I, I want to, personally, I can attest that the best way to eat strawberries is out in, that's why I need to steal. Out in, out in the field? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, when I'd go out and check her strawberries, sometimes I think she would want to weigh me first. Okay. Weigh me in and <laughs> well, weigh that me might, out. That might be a good process <laughs> here. So when, when they come out, uh, you just, you put them in the, uh, in the bags. Okay. And I'm going to put them in there to make it easier to get in the bag because I brought a little, I brought a scoop here. Okay. Can you hold up one? And to, uh, just put them in the bag. Okay. And one thing that's very important when you freeze, not just berries, but anything, uh, you want to keep as much air as you can away from your fruit. Okay. And when you uh, put these in the bag, uh, I always like to just put them down and, and uh, get it's as kinda... much of the air out as you can and make it make it flat and then Okay. I, so just I squeeze use, it just a little uh -huh, bit. I squeeze it, and then I, I make I tie the bag up. Okay. Um, and the way I do mine, just to make sure it doesn't break in the freezer. These are good bags, and you want to get the the higher meal bags a little um, a little thicker bag, and I just stick I them down. Double, double bag them. I double yeah. bag them. This allows you to put your um, label in the middle here. Okay. So it doesn't get um, messed up and, you know, bled on and, <laughs> and sense. all of that. And then, then I just tie it up again. And that, that makes a nice little package. Of course, you know, you might want to put more in there when you do them for your family. It depends on uh, how many you have in your family as to how much you would, you would want in there. Okay. But then you put these uh, in, in the freezer. Now, you do not have to put any preservative. You don't have to put any acid, any ascorbic acid, citric acid, or anything in these. Uh, that's the really nice thing about strawberries. Mm. All you, they, this is very simple. All you have to do is just put them in there. And then if you wanted to freeze them whole, um, you, could, you of course, you could just, just freeze them whole. But I, I would put them out on a flat surface, okay. like a cookie sheet or something, and freeze them. Freeze them like that. And uh, if you wanted to vacuum pack them, you, that's easy to do after they've been frozen. Uh, but you don't even have to vacuum pack. You can just put put the fresh, the whole berries in there and uh, use them. Use now, them now while you're doing you that, how long will they keep in the freezer? Uh, I would say if your freezer is in good condition, uh, zero to five degrees, uh, they will stay uh, five years, I, I mean two years, two years. Okay. Two years. But if you do the vacuum pack and and get the air and everything out, they they're reputed to last for five years. Wow! Uh, in the freezer, but make sure that your freezer stays zero to five degrees, and and uh, then you won't get the freezer burns yes, and, okay. and 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 all of that. So zero to five degrees. Mm -hmm. okay, it's, sure it's ideal. It's ideal temperature uh, for the for the freezing. So let me say when you take these out of the freezer. Uh, you don't, if you're going to make a, a pie, like somebody suggested that they like to do with the, <laughs> <laughs> with, with the berries, uh -huh. make a cobbler, um, and you want to cook your filling for the cobbler, uh, you don't have to thaw those berries uh -huh. before you start. You can start out on a low temperature and put your, a little bit of water and the sugar okay. and, the, and the margarine or butter, whatever you use to go into wow. to season them. And then just let them, uh, they can uh, thaw slowly, and then they won't uh, overcook and be real mushy that way. Uh, but then you can put your filling down in your, in your pan and put your, your uh, crust on the top, and they're ready to bake. 
All right, Miss Juanita, that sounds so good. I see I'm hungry. My like, stomach's yeah, growling hungry right now. When you start talking about the, all that butter and everything, yeah, that I tell you, man. Good, but look, thanks for that great information. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, thank you again, Ms. Juanita. Those strawberries were great. Well, what do you think about that, Mr. D? Most, most fantastic. Yes. I love strawberries. I do, too. Now, talk, speaking of strawberries, we're going to talk about strawberries, and we're going to talk about blackberries. That's right, a little bit. So, okay. Uh, talking about growing them, you, you, uh, mm -hmm. if you, strawberries and blackberries have a couple of things in common. One, they both like a high pH. Mm -hmm. pH needs to be up around as close to 6 as you can get it. Okay. So you need a soil test before you plant. Sure. And, and, uh, and make sure that you have lime <coughs> to get your pH up to where you need for it to be. Okay. Another thing that they have in common is they do best in full sun. They like sunny areas, so you're not going to have very much luck growing these in the shade. <laughs> uh, that's a couple of things they have in common. Uh, they taste good. That's another they thing taste they good. That's right. That's for but sure. But to, to give you a little bit more information, that's where you kind of, then, then you go differently then you because different. the, <laughs> the planting distances are quite different okay. from, from blackberries and strawberries. Uh, there are, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about right, some of that. the, well, let's go, we mentioned planting distances with, with blackberries, depending upon what kind you have, if you have the trailing blackberries mm -hmm. or the erect blackberries, okay. uh, 10 to 12 feet apart on the rows, and then rooted plants two to four feet apart. Okay. And these these are are pretty much if you have the uh, trailing varieties two to four feet feet apart. Okay. The erect varieties are about one and a half feet apart within the rows, but the rows need to be ten to twelve feet apart because they're going wow. to they're going to yeah, spread, spread out, out and and they're going to take up a lot of space. Okay, makes sense. Strawberries, on the other hand, if you have the hill system, one foot apart, three and a half inch rows which is probably pretty much the way that you have on your raised beds. Don't you have them about a foot apart in the row? No, Henry takes care of that. I'm sorry. Oh, Henry, <laughs> Henry, <laughs> Henry takes care of that. <laughs> well, I think that's about right. He may yeah. have actually two rows on a bed. He, Sometimes they'll alternate, he does, stagger, he does two, and have two, two rows, rows on a bed. Two rows of plants on the right, top yeah. of each one And of a lot of times they will do that, and they'll be about a foot <clears> apart, so they're you know, kind of kind of uh, diagonal from each okay. other. Matted row system, one and a half feet apart, three and a half inch between the rows okay. on, the, on the strawberries. Um, the uh, both both straw another thing both strawberries and blackberries have in common. Both of them are self fruitful, right. so you can plant one variety. You don't have to have pollinators for strawberries and blackberries. They they are poll self pollinating. And that's that's good to know. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see what else was I going to talk to you about with those. Yeah, let me ask you about diseases and insects. Diseases and insects, uh, very, they have very few compared to other fruits. Okay. Uh, you can get by most years without having to actually do a lot of uh, application of insecticides. Mm -hmm. uh, with strawberries, uh, there, there is a gray mold, which can really be a problem with strawberries. And if you have a lot of wet conditions, mm -hmm. you are going to have to apply fungicides for okay. strawberries. But... Uh, uh, for the most part, just uh, uh, if the weather conditions are dry you don't, and you don't use overhead irrigation, mm. uh, you, you're probably in pretty good shape. Otherwise, scout for insects. Yeah. Uh, not a lot. Of, I, I know one one little insect that I ran across in the strawberry planting one time was was called a seed bug. And it's a little bitty insect that all it feeds on is a little bitty seed on so the strawberry. So it doesn't bug. actually hurt okay. the fruit. And uh, really no need to no need to. So so worry, worry about that a lot. Okay. Not, a, not a real big problem. Uh, Mike, one thing about the, the plants themselves, I get a lot of questions out at the orchard about uh, the, the second year on the stalks where they bear, on the second year on the blackberries, mm -hmm. and the first year, you know, you, uh, after those are gone, you cut those out and just leave the second year's Take growth. Take the old because canes that's, off. Uh -huh, and I think people off. don't quite understand that concept, yeah. so you might explain that a little bit better okay. than what I could do. And, and then another thing, uh, Following the same line of thought with strawberries, strawberries, if you keep your 
plants. I mean, you grow strawberries as an annual plant. You plant them in the fall and we harvest them in the springtime. And then you destroy them, plant pumpkins and something else out there. And, right. and But if you want to grow them as a continuous crop, you can do that. However, the strawberry plant will put out a runner mm -hmm. and it'll put out a daughter plant. The fruit on the daughter plant is usually smaller than the fruit that was on that parent plant uh -huh. or the mother plant. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. Now, I know what I, want, I was trying to remember. Variety? I want to talk about some varieties. Uh -huh. That's right. Exactly right. We've got several varieties. <laughs> yeah. And the commercially produced strawberries are require a little bit more management. And so Miss Juanita is probably going to grow a variety that UT doesn't recommend that you grow in a home, home setting because... And, and some of the varieties grown commercially in our area are, are Chandler is probably the most popular, mm -hmm. but Sweet Charlie, uh, Camaroso, Douglas, Pajaro, and <laughs> Tangy are some of the commercially grown varieties. As far as the ones recommended for home use here in Tennessee, Cardinal is probably one yeah. of the most popular. It's a, a real tasty strawberry. Right. Those Her are the ones you see in the store all the time, the Cardinals. Well, I've, I've seen them a couple of times. Well, that is possible, but most of the ones I see in the store are the commercially grown varieties, hmm. like the ones I mentioned earlier. Okay. Like the, just I used to see channel. the Cardinals at the big box stores for the most part. And they've got them labeled as Cardinals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But Early Glow, Red Chief, All Star, Prime Time, and Late Star are varieties that, that UT recommends. Okay. And when do, we, when, when do we need to plant those? What you need to plant them in the fall. You plant okay, strawberries in the, in the fall. You plant them around the middle of October. and. Uh, and uh, you may have to uh, protect them a little bit in the winter time with row covers or, or things okay. like that. Uh, one thing you keep in mind, one thing about strawberries is uh, you'll have your first ripe strawberry 30 days from the day of the last frost. Okay. Because that frost kills the bloom. Okay. And you'll have new blooms that come on. But uh, if you have a full bloom strawberry plant and it frost, the plant starts over and you can start counting. Wow. 30 days, over. 30 yeah. days from the last frost is when you'll have your ripe fruit. Okay. Okay, right. the strawberries. Let's go into some of the varieties on blackberries. Okay. On the thornless blackberries, we have Arapaho, yeah. Chester, Hull, and Navajo. On the thorn varieties, Cheyenne, Shawnee, Choctaw, and Kiowa. Indian Ma names. Sounds like a little Indian names. Yeah, right? Indian names. Because a lot of these were produced, uh, came, uh, developed out west. Okay. And when do we need to plant those? When do they need to get uh, in the ground? You plant those like you would plant a tree, you know, ah. winter, late winter. Mm -hmm. okay. And a lot of times you're planting just root cuttings is what you're planting. Okay. And pretty easy to maintain for the most part. Pretty easy to maintain. The uh, uh, trailing varieties, you will need to use a trellis system. The erect varieties, <laughs> you just let them grow like a bush, like a blueberry or something like that. All right, there we run. All right, mm -hmm. thanks for the information, Mr. D. Here's our Q&A session, and Ms. Juanita, if you want to jump in there with us, you surely can. Here's the first uh, question we have, and it's actually a live plant sample, Mr. D. It's uh, Euronymous, Euronymous. Euronymous uh, shrub, and it has Euronymous scales. It does, and Euronymous scales uh, are probably the number one insect pest on this shrub. Uh, it is an armored scale. Uh, I don't know whether you can see... Uh, Get in here real close. The little white cigar shaped critters are the male, and the female is a, a little, it looks like a little oyster mm -hmm. shell. And you can spray these right now and you can kill the males. Okay. Uh, the female, however, that armored scale will protect yeah, her. Yeah, that's protection. So, what you, in, in order to control your onomous scale, you need to. Uh, Put out several applications of an insecticide, wow. and you need to time it so that you're. They, there, are, there are multiple generations of Euonymus per year. I think there are what three generations per year mm -hmm. at least. You're right. And so you're going to have to spray several times a year. Okay. And so the, what can we use? <laughs> the uh, during the February. I mean, it's too late now, but in February or March, right. if they had sprayed with a dormant oil, they might not have had that problem right okay. now. Uh, if they hadn't gotten good coverage with a dormant oil, it might have taken care of the problem. Right. But now, we're, uh, you need to spray two sprays 10 days apart wow. whenever the crawlers are emerging. And uh, so we're, you know, we may be a little late, late. on this right here. But, uh, and then you need to do that at, at each flush of crawlers. 
but the products that we use is horticultural oil. Okay. That's so you can go back with oil. Okay. Uh, malathion, seven, carbaryl, <laughs> orthene, dirgeban, insecticidal soap, dimethoate, safari, tristar, distance, and talus. <laughs> right. And I think we'll put those up so you guys yeah. can, can <laughs> so you can follow it. Okay. <laughs> that right. ought to do the trick. Okay. And one last thing about this too, uh, you usually have scales when you have stressed plants. So we need to make sure that those plants are getting the water that they need, the nutrients that they need, because uh, if not, they're going to look like this. And it's been my experience that most eonomists are stressed. <laughs> <'Cause they're, laughs> because they are, most of them have scales. Because they have scales mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. hey. Kind of like <laughs> Good <fatigue>. observation. <laughs> kind of like, uh, what, what, spot on Fatinia? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah most <laughs> Fatinia have, uh, are stressed also. Uh-huh. They're stressed. All right, there you have it. Okay, here's our next uh, question, and it's a viewer email, and we like those, Miss Juanita. And this is from Jason. He writes, I have a rosemary plant, and it's on the screen there, that was planted three or four years ago. I don't remember it turning brown or losing leaves in past winters. Do you know if new growth will grow on old branches, or should I cut back? I'm hoping it's not dead. Any advice you can give would be greatly appreciated. I'm all ears on that one because You're I have all one ears. the same problem. Well, here's the deal. This is what you need to do. Okay. I right would here. start cutting it back until you can find green tissue. Okay. You don't find any green tissue, you know what that says, Mr. D? You need to go buy another one. <laughs> you might need to go buy another rosemary, <laughs> Jason. Yeah. And, and something else, too, the old wood that's near the stem does not produce new growth. Okay? So that's not going to happen. So if you have to cut it all the way back down to the to the root, may as well go and get it. Might as well home. go ahead and get it out anyway. You know, this has been a tough winter. It's and been I'm tough. afraid we're going to have to replace a lot of our plants. Right. Uh, and I'm also concerned a little bit about uh, some of the plants that we may be buying in the nursery. Make sure that you check those mm -hmm. plants and make sure you don't see any splitting bark and things like sure. that because I'm afraid that we might be buying some damaged products, you know, in the springtime. So be sure that you inspect the plants that you buy. Okay, inspect and scout. Because here's the mm -hmm. thing about rosemary, it should be greening up now. Right. And if it's not greening up now, then that's your indicator that it may not have survived well, the mine, winter. Mine's in a pot, so probably mine's done in a if pot. If you just brought that pot inside. Brought it in. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't think about it. Yeah, but yeah, if it's not greening uh, up now, yeah. then yeah, it's a pretty good chance that you would have to buy another one. Okay. All right, so there you go, Jason. Thanks for that question. Here's our next question, okay, which is a good one, too. What is the lowest air and soil temperature to set out tomato plants? <laughs> Above freezing. <laughs> Above freezing. I was going to say 55 degrees. Fif 55. <laughs> yeah, for, let, for, your, uh, let the, let the, soil, the soil. Soil yeah. temperature, that's probably a pretty good. Pretty good I think that's uh, pretty good. Pretty 55, good. That's 60 about degrees. when you plant corn, you know. And, and the average, I mean, you ought to be okay. Uh, you ought to be okay right now to go and set those tomato plants out. You ought to. You ought to be. You ought to. On yeah. the average, <laughs> uh, April 15th is, is the last uh, frost, you know, freeze that we have in this area. Maybe maybe even April the 10th here. Well, we got the peach crop failure on April the 17th. Ah, we have, that's right. And on you will have, you know, averages yes. are averages. So you'll yeah, have them both uh -huh. ways. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, yeah, uh, the times are pretty close together. And you're out in Millington, so. Uh, I yeah. will, uh, usually a degree yeah, colder. Colder, right. right. And a degree can make a difference it can where make frost a difference. is concerned. Yes, it can. Uh, but my suggestion is if you have just a few tomato plants, have your five gallon bucket handy where you can set that five gallon bucket on top of it. And you know, cover it up. And cover yeah. it, uh -huh. or, or cover it with a quilt or something like that. Uh, but I, you, you, most years, you'd be okay to go right. and set the tomato plants out now. Uh, however, well, we you know, always you do say take a chance. Good Friday. Okay. Good, Good Friday. Good Friday, and that's late this year. Mm -hmm. It's, what is it, a week from Friday? Yeah, it's coming mm -hmm. a little later. All right, yeah. Yeah. let's get to this last question, okay? My pecan trees did not produce a huge crop last year. What are the chances that this will happen this year? Uh, me and Miss Wanda yeah, were just, just got, talking yeah. about that. She <laughs> had, a, that. had a bumper crop out at Jones Orchard this past year. And I used to work with uh, pecan growers down in Mobile County, mm -hmm. Alabama, which was one of the largest pecan producing counties in the state of Tennessee. And in I would Alabama. have conversations with Internal Re Revenue Service officials every once in a while because uh, down there, even down there in commercial pecan production areas, they would average a good crop about only once every 10 years. Wow. And Miss Juanita said that's probably true for, for them. Once every 10 uh, years. However, pecans do tend to alternate bare. And uh, 
some years you have a if if you have a bad crop year, the next year you have a good one. But alternate keep that bearing. in mind. Alternate bearing. They have if you have a real heavy crop, next year you're, you're not going to have a good crop. So if you didn't have a heavy crop, maybe be hopeful. Be All positive. Right. Well, thanks, Mr. D. Thanks, Ms. Juanita, for your time. Be sure to connect with us. We'll send you weekly email updates about Family Plot. Just go online to WKNO.org and sign up under Get Local Show Updates. The email address is familyplot at WKNO.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.